welcome back to my channel if you are new my name is Cordy and this is creative on the cheap where I like to do budget-friendly DIYs and home decor and share with you some DIY tips tricks and techniques along the way so today's video is part of my once a month series where on the last day of each month I share with you any DIY supply that I tried during the month and let you know if I consider it a favorite or a fail if there's some sort of home decor or something awesome for your home I will include it in that video as well well, today it's strictly just DIY supplies, although some of them are things you can use outside of DIY. Now, without further ado, let's get into the first item. So the first item I'm going to show you guys is one that I mentioned in last month's DIY favorites and flops, and that was the plastic reusable stencil blanks that I was going to order from Amazon. It was a 15 pack. If you'll remember last month, I showed you the white show offs brand um, stencils and I did a tutorial on how to cut those, etc. I will link both those videos down below for you guys. But this is what I ordered. Um, I did not take the time to shove it back in there, but it came like this in a really sturdy box. They're rolled up like this. Now I will say when I got it, my sticker said um, 14 and on Amazon it said 15. There were 15 in there and I like sent them an email and I was like, oh, you might want to correct that. So they said they corrected it. But um, anyway, these are 12 by 24. So these are longer than the show off brand. So that was one reason why I wanted to try them. Here's one scrap left over. Like I said, they're clear. The thickness of them, they are a little bit thicker than the show off brand. And I cut a stencil. Let me just put up a picture so you can kind of see it. It went fine. I put it on the poster board setting on my Cricut. It cut out just as easily as that last one that I did. No issues. Here it is kind of holding in the flesh. The only downfall to this so far um, is when you go to peel this off of the mat, you do need to be careful because I was just kind of doing an aggressive pull and I did get like a little bit of tear in one of the corners of the letters. But once I realized that and I just peeled it slowly, it was fine. So you can't just, whoosh, you know, rip it off because um, it will rip your plastic. But I'm really happy with it. And you know, you can use the, I saved the other pieces of it. So I can use these as stencils. I can use this as a stencil. So I would say that this is definitely a favorite. I, I'm very happy with it. And I'm going to probably whip through all of these making some stencils. So yeah, favorite. All right. So my next item is an item that you would use in your craft room or not. And that is my Grove Collaborative Wrinkle Spray. Now, um, I do have another one. It's called Real Simple Wrinkle Spray. That one just stays in my laundry closet. The reason this one's in here is because it's a small bottle. But I love having this in my craft room because it's just a quick way to get, if you work with fabrics, which I have been doing a lot lately, to just get those wrinkles out. Super easy to use. Um, you can go check out any of my last videos with fabric and see how simple it is. I mean, literally, it's just spray put a little pressure and you're done. I am not a fan of ironing clothes, especially. I just don't do it. I use my dryer, <laughs> um, but I will use this for fabric. So, um, Anyway, uh, I would definitely recommend this. I have used the Downy version and it works great. I also had a couple subscribers say that they've bought the one from Dollar Tree and that it works well. I have not tried the Dollar Tree version one yet, but at a price point, it would probably be more effective than this one. But I definitely think this is just something you should have in your craft room. It's a great thing to just make your life a little easier. So favorite. All right, so the next item I've been using quite a bit lately because I've been working with fabric and that is my Gorilla Glue Spray Adhesive. Now, for the longest time, I was using the Treehouse Spray Adhesive from Hobby Lobby and I started using this one and I really, really like it. Um, it does, what's really nice about this one is that it is repositional. So when you spray something, you can put it down and easily pull it back up with no problems. It's clear, the spray is controlled, um, you can use it indoor or outdoor, it's got a heavy bond, and I honestly feel like it doesn't smell as bad as that Treehouse one from Hobby Lobby. Um, so I love this, I think it's great, and I definitely have been using it a lot lately, and this is definitely a favorite for me. All right, moving right along to another Gorilla Glue product. This is the Gorilla Glue Clear Grip, okay? I'm sorry guys, I'm old, so I can't see. It is 100% waterproof, permanent bond, holds in just seconds. So this is equivalent to E6000, all right? 
But what I like about this one is be when you go to use it. Now, a lot of people, Crafting World, or if you watch YouTube, or some of them will put um, some E6000 and hot glue so they can get kind of an instant bond and then let the E6000 cure, right? Well, this one actually becomes pretty solid within two minutes. I say solid, it still needs the 24 hours to cure just like E6000, but there is a firmer hold within two minutes than there is if you use E6000. I definitely have noticed a difference in that. I mean, it's not like totally solid, you can just pick it up and throw it around, but you can instantly kind of see within those two minutes that it does work a little bit faster than E6000. So I've started using this one right here. Um, and I absolutely love it. It looks, I mean, it works really, really well. So another favorite, Gorilla Glue Clear Grip. The next item is also an item that you could use for crafting or not. So I posted a picture on one of my Instagram stories, I don't know, about a week ago about uh, working with this. This is shiplap contact paper, okay? And I got it on Amazon. It was a huge roll. I've already used a ton of it. Um, this is great for uh, crafting, obviously. If you're doing bigger projects and don't wanna just always have to work with scrapbook paper that's 12 by 12, you can get larger pieces. And according to this um, beautiful contact paper, you can also, with the diagrams I'm telling you here, they also suggest you can wrap your books with this. Uh, perhaps your doors would like this. Your drawers would like it. I feel like Dr. Seuss, your doors and your drawers and your cabinets, your kitchen cabinets. So they have pictures on here giving you suggestions of where you can use it. So if you want to use it other places, but I really like it. It's super sturdy and it's really easy to work with. Like put it down, pull it up, put it down, pull it up. So very happy with this purchase from Amazon. So definitely a favorite. The next product is something, um, I actually got this as a free sample from Creativation and I've used it, I used it in a Valentine DIY I did and it's this C&T Publishing Transfer Artist Paper. They do sell this on Amazon and what I love about this is that you can print a picture from your printer. You just put it in like regular printer paper. You can do any kind of design and then you simply just iron it on. Um, you can transfer it and it says you can transfer it to a lot of different things, mixed medias, um, you know, wood, you can do fabric, you can do plastic. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's really, really easy to work with. So I do have a DIY, um, coming up, uh, very, very, very soon using this, but I have used it for that Valentine DIY, like I said. So this is awesome. I absolutely love it. CNT transfer paper, so definitely a favorite. Now it's time for a flop. So this product I reused just recently in a DIY, and it is the Amy Howard At Home Natural One Step Paint. It's chalk paint. Now, the reason I originally bought this paint was my husband and I built a 16 foot by five foot farm table. And around it, I have gone thrifting and found all kinds of different chairs. And I wanted to go in and kind of paint some of them some really soft colors, like a soft gray, a soft yellow, etc. So I got this because the size was perfect. And I thought, okay, this is gonna be awesome. As soon as I opened it, I knew I wasn't gonna use it on furniture. The consistency of this is way thinner, in my opinion, than Annie Sloan, Chalked, or even Waverly. Um, when I refinish a furniture, I have nailed down how I refinish it. I have a very like specific process to do it to make sure it lasts. And I always use Annie Sloan paint. I never stray from that. That's just my personal choice. But when I saw this color and how it was all these different fun kind of softer colors, I wanted to give it a go. Nope, not gonna do it. On top of that, when I was telling my friend about it, um, she said, yeah, don't use it. She tried to refinish some chairs and she said it just did not go well. You had to paint in the same direction, which is one technique I don't do when I refinish uh, furniture. And um, it, it just didn't go well. She said it didn't last, started chipping. Um, so for me, this is just a no-go. And when I did my project with the 3D bunny sign, I actually went back and painted over it white. So. I just, I'm kind of bummed about it. It was fun colors. Now I will say this, last month, if you saw my last month's video, I did review the Amy Howard Matte Sealer, Liquid Wax Sealer, and I love that stuff. Like it is awesome. But the paint, I'm just gonna have to go with, it is a flop. 
there you have it let me know down in the comments do you want to try any of these products or have you tried it and you have some additional feedback about these items also if there's something you think that I need to be aware of and try let me know and maybe I can include that in a future monthly favorites with that being said thank you so much for watching guys I really appreciate it don't forget you can find me on Facebook Instagram and Twitter for a little bit of extra material and if you are new I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss any of my future DIYs. Until the next time, I will see you later. Bye!